All right. This next talk I'm excited about uh, for a number of reasons, one of which is, again, it's one that I don't have to facilitate. Um, but also, um, it, it's another model for um, bringing in some, uh, uh, some collaboration, some uh, multiple stakeholder uh, projects into the empirical educator project and, and scaling up. Um, one of the models that we've been thinking about is um, uh, can we bring in uh, new institutions that are actually already engaged in a collaboration, either in pairs or uh, that with uh, somebody who's already in the cohort, somebody who's already in the network. Uh, so I was really happy uh, when speaking uh, with the good folks at the University of North Texas uh, with Mike Simmons um, to hear uh, that they were engaged uh, already in some work uh, with Pearson on a comprehensive student record project. Um, it actually has several different names, depending on who they're talking to and what their goal is with the conversation. Um, but I happen to know that there are several other members of the network who are interested in comprehensive student records projects for multiple reasons. And this is an interesting and developing uh, space. Um, uh, so this was a ready-made collaboration that we're happy to have on board uh, EEP, and I'm excited to hear more about it. Come on. Sure. Um, take the mics or the podium, whichever you, or lectern rather, whichever you prefer. So do me a favor. At 2.10 p.m., oh. please stand up. 2.30. Right now. I mean, like, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah, stretch, stretch. Because you're never going to listen to me unless you're stretched out. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm Mike Simmons, and I'm the Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs at North Texas. And uh, for those of you in academia, you know that means other duties as assigned. So. My other duty is assigned right now um, is to present uh, our project, and I'm joined by Dr. Tanya Heap, who is our Director of Learning Research and Accessibility for the university. And she is three months into the job, I think. Is it working? OK, I think, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, three months into the job, three months and two days. I'm new to UNT. I came from University of Illinois before, so yeah, it's right. an experience for me as well. So this project has been going on for about um, five years. So what I want to do today is um, just give you a sense of the project. So it's not so much about the project itself. It's about how we're getting there, what we're doing, and then the research that we want to do as a result of it. So raise your hand if anyone at your institution or anyone that you're working with is trying to deal with credentials or extended transcripts or comprehensive learner records. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's not a, it's a thing. It wasn't a thing two or three years ago. Now it is a thing, and that's great, um, which points to the need for collaboration. Uh, what we found was uh, that um, trying to figure it out on our own was not a solution. Now, I should say that Jody McPherson, who's the Vice President for Career Services at Pearson, was scheduled to fill this spot right here today as well. So I guess since she couldn't make it due to a flight, we're no longer collaborating with Pearson. I think we're out. <laughs> so I'm looking for other vendors right now. No, no, just, just kidding. Jody got stuck in Denver in, in her flight, so she couldn't come. So I'm going to speak for her. And Emily's here from Pearson and has agreed to fact check me if I say anything incorrect about Pearson. So um, we'll talk a little bit about that collaboration and then about research, uh, as we said. So the real question is, what were we trying to do and what's the problem that, that matters to students. And that is pretty easy to figure out um, in the sense of we all know what we're trying to get, and it's the student learning. We're coming at this a little bit differently. There's a lot of teaching and learning and learning science and great conversations going on here. We're looking at a little bit of a different angle, and that, that angle has to do with signaling. Now, the, the smart people in the room would say metacognition. Does a student know what they know? Are they thinking about what they know? I just use the word signal. Um, 
And, and we want to talk about that. And, and that's sort of the basis of our project and a, a longer term um, vision of our research. Some assumptions we made. First, um, students have a bunch of high impact experiences when they come to school. And whether it's two year, four year, doesn't matter. They're going to do stuff that matters to them in the context of classes and co-curricular. They're just learning. So, you know, what's the percentage of that that we actually capture, assess? And even if we do, do we really know, as some of the other earlier speakers presented? So can we look at that whole body of, of, of um, learning that a student has, and can we in some way get them to figure that out? Can we get them to collect that, connect that, and somehow begin to signal that. So it's sort of a signal to themselves, but then the broader picture is the external signaling. Now that's all um, you know, kind of uh, mystery talk for, well, why don't they just show their grades and do they have a transcript? I don't want to go down that speech road today, but as we know, the effectiveness of the transcript and the effectiveness of grades you're a moderate best in terms of goals. So here's the interesting thing. The other assumption we made is why do students come to college? Now, I'm in a group of esteemed educators, and this will offend many of you. They do not come to learn from you. Why do they come? Number one reason, by far. Job. Job, job, job. Why do their parents send them to us or their families support them? Job. Why do our faculty think they're in the room for the most part? Learn. <laughs> okay, so that's not a total disconnect, but it's a little bit of a disconnect, right? And not all faculty. There are some degrees and majors and programs which absolutely they're preparing straight for a career. But in general, and particularly in the general education curriculum, there's a bit of a disconnect between what our faculty think the students are doing there and what the students think they're doing there. So can we find some way to translate that? Can we find some way to signal? And we're really concerned with signaling to students to bring meaning. So I go into faculty meetings and talk about this. And early on, some of the humanities faculty in a group you know, about half this size, someone raised their hand and said, we are not a vocational institution. We're an institution of higher education. We are research. This is not a vocational. And our program will not be demeaned. Okay, um, you know, what do you say to that? But that was an attitude which um, wasn't prevalent, but we heard it a lot. So we switched the conversation. As Michael said, who we talk to depends on how we talk about this. Um, I don't talk to faculty this directly in many cases, depending on the department, but, but I think we all have all reached a basic understanding. So that's the problem we think that matters to students, and there's that bit of a disconnect um, the assumptions we made, again, students have experiences, they can be connected, we can help them, and we can help them signal. Now, I want to talk just a second about signaling. Now, this presentation will be available, and please don't worry about reading that, but these are just some of the kinds of philosophical statements and things that we thought about signaling. If the transcript and the grade don't signal, what does? Um, and the other interesting thing is, we started out thinking this will help them get a job. We flipped that thinking about halfway through the project because what we found is no two employers will tell you the same thing about what they want. That is an endless chase. So we just stopped and said, wait, isn't this about the students articulating their own skills, their own learning, their own education? Isn't that more important? And since then, we've had a far more productive conversation with faculty, students, employers, and our partners um, at Pearson and other places, because I think we've realized that that's really the secret sauce in the project. So the other um, aspect, let me just tell you a little bit about how we're doing it, and then I want to um, turn it over to Tanya and talk about the research. We had. Um, a napkin at a restaurant. <laughs> this was the, ori the original sketch of I was sitting around with some faculty and staff members and you know we just drew it out and I think you know you all have one of these for your things right at some point whether it's on a sketch pad or a post set of post-it notes some of you are laughing because you know you know how this works 
Well, this evolved into basically the Connect project, and that's the range of experiences a student have and how we might connect and all that. Well, you can see it's overly complicated. Uh, I mean, we've taken a lot of grief for how complex it is. That's why we needed partners and why we needed help. Plus, there's a huge technology infrastructure that's involved here, and we decided um, that's where we needed help. So we originally started with an e-portfolio. This was going to be an e-portfolio, and that would capture everything, and we would then, students would present these lovely e-portfolios, and job done. No, that didn't work. Nothing against the e-portfolio. It's simply the work, the overhead for faculty, and the overhead for students in creating portfolios uh, in the context of courses and in co-curricular just was too much. Um, the exceptional students would do it, but then again, the exceptional students didn't need this. Yeah. So given that, we, we extended our partnership to some other vendors and basically uh, went, went down the road of trying to make sure that we had an infrastructure to, build, to collect evidence and then to show it, but as much internally to students as externally. And so that's been the trick and that's been the work with Pearson. There's not a pr product uh, on the market that particularly does that. And so part of the collaboration is to um, help figure that out. You know, I've worked, you've all worked with vendors and, and there's a certain incentive that you have to understand at some point, they have to make money. Um, and so when you can align your, yourself with that notion of, hey, that's something that would be good, and it's also good for our students, that's where our successful collaboration has come. It doesn't always work that way. Many times there are vendors where you know, that match is not there, and you're just buying something, or you're just contracting for something, and that, that's all legit. In this case, uh, we had mutually aligned interests, and so it's been OK. Um, it's been okay to do. So the other thing I want to say about the partnership, um, the collaboration with Pearson is we don't know the answer. And that's been interesting because usually vendors walk in the door and sell you the answer. And, and they've been so open in saying, oh, well, we don't know that either, but that's pretty interesting. Let's try and do that. So what's the that? Um, it, it's basically a, 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 a viewpoint, a, a view of students. This is, these are the early iterations of what we're doing internally now, cobbling together canvas and badges and things like that. And these are intentionally small because I don't want you to get fixated on this. This is right now in place. Hey, student, here's some text looking trends of, of your skills. Hey, student, here's a path looking view. Hey, student, here's a dashboard looking view. The research is, okay, does that matter? If I'm a freshman and I see that I've earned communication skills in my math class, Will I somehow then become more interested in math because I see that I'm getting something out of it because normally I don't like math. You know, we're playing in that area. And the, and the work with Pearson is to evolve this into a far more sophisticated view that's interactive, potentially uses AI and labor market statistics to sort of adjust on the fly. That's a big lift, and that's way down the road in terms of product. And a more visually compelling. And so they have the expertise that we would never have in order to do something like this. It would take us years to figure it out, but they have the resources to do it. So that's been the good part of the pathway. And um, so I want to turn this over to um, Tanya now and let her talk a little bit about the research and the impact of it. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Okay, so as he was, Mike was just saying, the, saying earlier, so uh, why we're doing research on this? Because we want to find out if all the things, you know, all the efforts that his team is making matter, matter to students, most of all matter to faculty, matter to the workforce as well. Um, so what we learned so far is that in terms of, if you just look at that poor e-portfolios per se in dashboards, we're finding so far that um, um, employers, half, approximately half the employers care about them, half the employers don't really care. They're really looking at skills, you know, how do the students, beyond the GPA, you know, where kind of in higher education is moving more towards, the, to a, towards a more innovative model that goes away from the traditional model of GPA scores towards more of a skill. Are, are those students, are those graduates be able to do, perform our jobs? Um, and so what they're really interested in is seeing how these students, and what we're interested in seeing is how these students articulate these marketable skills, where it's written or communication, uh, team working, critical thinking. Um, and so what, we, what we're 
uh, searching, what we sought to investigate is, uh, these are some of the research questions that we've been, they're still in the making, so we're really in the design stage. Uh, but essentially, what, what we want to find out is, uh, does the inclusion of a dashboard or a transcript that presents students' marketable skill um, it have an impact on students' performance, so short-term performance on assessments, GPA engagement in the course materials, retention, does it reduce or does it have an effect on the students' dropout rates? Do they want to stick in the course? Uh, and employability, so we'll also look at both short-term and long-term outcomes. And are e-portfolios and micro-credentials the most effective mediums for documenting these marketable skills and how can we present them? Uh, Mike was mentioning something about, he showed you a little bit about different ways in which uh, these marketable skills can be presented, whether by a transcript, by a dashboard, so in multiple ways. And we're looking at all these uh, kind of variables. Um, and so some of the, uh, the methods that we'll be collecting, and again, you don't have to read all of this, but just uh, for, but if you want to find out more from us, you feel free to contact us later if you want to hear more of the details of the design that we're looking for. But essentially, we're looking at both data. So we're, look, we're going to collect data sources from those activities, those initiatives that are part of the Career Connect project, and looking at control courses that don't have this initiative in place. And looking at, in terms of data sources, we're looking at um, student participation in credit bearing and non-credit internships, uh, voluntary work, study abroad, anything, any initiative that's curricular or co-curricular that enhances their marketable skills. Um, and comparing those different activities within the course, within the initiative, but also between. So the courses that adopted the model and courses that did not adopt the initiative. And also looking at, uh, in terms of what we're going to analyze, uh, so learner performance in terms of assessment scores, do these, if students see this, the progression of their marketable skills, uh, does this have an impact, impact on their scores? Do they perform better? Are they more motivated? Do they engage more in the class? Um, do they secure maybe more internships? Uh, uh, is their GPA, does it, their GPA change? Are they more motivated to stay in the class and not drop out? In particular, as it was saying, you know, math and biology, uh, some of these classes have um, uh, retention issues. Uh, students, a lot of students who sign up for, for biology majors, they want to do for, because they want to do pre-med and then they decide it's not their thing and then they drop out and they change majors. So uh, do these initiatives help them stay uh, on track, uh, stay, stay on, on their chosen pathway? Uh, so we're going to look, in terms of the design, it's going to be a quasi-experimental design with some mixed methods thrown in. So look, both looking at scores, but also we're planning on having some focus groups so we also want to talk to some of these students. Of course, we have to choose a fewer, a smaller sample, but we actually want to talk to them and see what works for them. Um, what works, uh, do they like this, the portfolio? How do you use the e-portfolio? Are they presenting this to their prospective employers? So uh, really um, uh, honing in on those questions, really asking them specifically what really works best for them. Um, and so long-term, so short-term, we're looking at assessment and performance, but also long-term long additional questions are, Again, look at employability, as Mike was saying earlier. Um, uh, eventually, students, they, they sign up for a degree, they get a degree because they want a job. Maybe they want a better, they want a better job, as somebody else said in a previous presentation. Uh, maybe they want to move from, from poverty to middle class. Um, and so, do these signals matter? Um, so, do these student skills, uh, does the, this way of presenting students uh, progress on marketable skills, does this make them more employable? Does this help students even articulate their skills better? Uh, and so these are some of the things that we'll be, we're going to be measuring and analyzing over the next few months. Thank you. So I'm glad that she's here because these are hard questions and we were struggling with these. One of the things I want to throw to you, because I, I think everybody has this struggle is, the real test is later on, right? I mean, while we have them, I can look, but later on, did this have any impact on, if you just want to look at jobs or careers, however you want to measure that. And, and if anybody's cracked that nut, we, we'd like to know, but there's just, that really is the thing. And I think, honestly, that's the compelling reason for Pearson's involvement as well, because we all are chasing that idea of the longer term success of students. I want to close with um, what I think is, is potentially the same things many of you are facing, and it's, I didn't mention this at first, but I want to say it now, the external pressures. So students and parents think they're coming for a reason, but what does the public think we're doing? What do the public policymakers think we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be 
getting them jobs. So I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether you agree with that or like that. That is the reality we find ourselves in, and I suspect it's probably where you are. So this is one way of trying to get at that. We need to signal to those constituencies, those stakeholders, yes, we're doing that. Oh, yes, my your kid has a degree in biology, and they're going to know a lot about biology, and they're going to be the best biologist in the world, but they're also going to have these translatable, marketable skills, and you're going to sleep better at night because they're not in your basement. Thank you all. <laughs>